Hello, welcome back to my series about the, the dark eye core rules. This video, and I think I'll make several videos because I try to keep them short. The last was quite long with over half an hour. I promise to make this shorter. Um, this video or these videos will be about the second chapter, the core rules, the core game mechanics. I'm going to explain you how tests work. And you will basically know everything about tests. I'm not going to in explain you all the talents you can roll and, and how they work, but the core mechanics, what you have to roll, how you modify rolls, what the result of the rolls can mean, or what you use to uh, to tell how well you succeeded. So this is quite unique in the dark eye and a bit complicated at first, but it works out pretty well. It's just a thing you have to get used to, and then it is, and it has actually quite an entertaining part about it and can be very exciting to roll a role like in the dark eye um, but let's get to the explanation so ah uh, yeah before actually we go to the mechanics and um, the dice what dice do you know to roll tests usually you use d6 and d20 where most of the tests are rolled with d20 um, actually, all of the tests are rolled with d20. d6 is um, only used to for damage and initiative and such things. Things you don't actually test. Where you just initiative is is for example your initiative value plus d6 damage is d6 to d6 plus something your strengths or something so you sum only up i don't think there's really something where you make a test you just get trying to get a result with the d6 everything else is rolled as a test with the d20 where you have to beat a number you have a fixed value in your stats in your skill and you beat that number and uh, this gives you a result and you beat the number by rolling under you roll equal or under for example you're trying to make a attack an attack you have an attack value of 16 you roll 16 or lower and you have hit your opponent he still can dodge he still can parry your your attack but you will have succeeded same with a skill test or an attribute test you have an attribute value of 12 you roll 12 or less you have succeeded in the test and yeah that's where we are actually already at the explanation of a skill test or an attribute test an attribute test not a skill test an attribute test is as i said you have an attribute value of x you try to roll x or lower you have succeeded um what attributes are there here's a list i'm not going to explain them i just um, name them and try to tr translate them um i don't know the official translation i um Use one I come up with and I think is the most likely. First attribute is courage. Um, next attribute is cleverness. Then intuition, charisma, dexterity, agility, constitution. Is constitution the translation? It's your physical toughness um, and strength. If you have any questions about them, ask in the comments. I'm not going at. I assume they are self explanatory, self explanatory, for the most part. Um, if you have a question, ask in the comments. So, and you roll on these uh, attributes. Like I said, you have a certain number. It ranges from seven to twenty, and you roll and you try to beat the number, and then you succeed or you fail. Um, usually your character has a value your starting character normally has a value from 8 that would be really crappy to 14 or 15 that would be quite good um, yeah that's how you, that's the attributes and the attribute test you can have um, an added difficulty or you can make a test more easy by adding a modifier you simply raise a lower the attribute value with the modifier would say easy test plus six you run in the door you have strength 12 you try to strength test to run in the door but the door is already damaged and weak 
and the game master would say, okay, it's an easy test, the, demons, the door is already managed, make a strength test plus six, which would mean you add six to your strength and then you roll the test. Same with more difficult, the door is like uh, very strong or it is held shut by someone, you try to run it in, uh, then you would make a test minus six. Um, and you would lower your strength by six, six and then you roll a test and try to beat that. Um, plus six, minus six are given as the most difficult and most easiest. You can, of course, give anything between these numbers. Um, that is the, in the decision of the game master, or there will be, there will be um, a number given in the adventure book. Next thing is critical success and critical failure. With an attribute test or an attack or defense role, parry role, critical success is always, not always, you roll a one, you have a chance for critical success. If you roll a one, you've always succeeded. Obviously, um, you can get a critical success in this case if you roll the same test again and succeed in the test. You don't have to roll a second one, you just have to succeed. For example, I try to run in the door, no modifications, my strength is 12. I roll a one, then I have run in the door, no matter what. I roll again against the 12, and if I manage to beat that, I have run in the door very effectively. For example, also running over the person standing behind the door or something. Or the, the game master would decide what kind of boon uh, benefit I would get in this situation. He can kind of, can, it depends on basically on the creativity of the game master to make something up in this situation, based on the situation, what you could have achieved by rolling a critical success. Um, if the second roll fails, it only means I don't have a critical success. It doesn't mean the complete test fails. When I roll the one the first time on the test, it is a success, no matter what. If the second roll fails, I still have the success. I just don't have the critical success. And um, for critical failure, it works pretty much the same. You roll a 20, you failed. Even when your uh, value you have to beat is 20 or higher. 20, you failed. If you roll again and you fail again, then you have a critical miss. So if you're very skilled, a critical miss is very unlikely. For example, if you're very strong and have a modifier and your chance, you have to roll against something above 20, then you have to roll two 20s to um, fail. And that is basically the reason why you make a second roll. First, it makes it more unlikely to uh, fail. It doesn't happen so often. Otherwise, on a d20, you would have a 10% chance to get an extraordinary good or bad um, result. And with the second roll, you can uh, change, you, you make it more less likely and it is also more likely for a good character, for a skill character, to get a good result and less likely for him to get a bad result. But here in this box, if you see such a box, I'm not going to explain them all the time. Um, maybe I'm, I'm going to, I don't know. This box gives you an optional rule and you can use this rule, but you don't have to. And these rules will never be used in the official material. Um, and if they are used, they might be explained again in the material, in the uh, adventure book. This simply says, if you wanted to be more extreme, you can leave off the second roll. And that's actually what we do. We like it pretty extreme in my group. And we have always left this, um, we have always left out the second roll. We just fumble a lot and we critically succeed a lot. Um, and if you have to ever roll on the value below one, you automatically fail. For example, you try to run in the door, you're not the strongest, you only have strength nine, and then you are already hurt, you were damaged by a combat, and you maybe are on the magical influence or are sick, and 
uh, the door is pretty strong and you have strength 9 and the game master says so this is a modifier of minus 10 then you would have minus 10 or if you have 9 strength and the game master says this is a modifier of minus 9 then you would have left would be left with zero strength this means you automatically fail you don't even have the chance to roll a one to automatically succeed you simply fail and as i've already explained when you have a value higher than 20 you still can fail roll a 20 you fail roll two 20 roll two 20s you automatically fail critical um yeah this is how attribute tests work on strength on courage on cleverness the same rules basically apply to attack and parry, attack and defense. Um, there are more rules to combat and attack and defense. They are explained in, uh, in the combat chapter. So I'm only going to explain in this chapter attribute tests and skill tests. And later on in the combat chapter, I will go into detail into combat. Um, that's actually what is explained here. It says we're going to explain attack and parry although they are very similar in the comment chapter. And I think I make a cut here because the next uh, part will be about skill checks, which are quite similar and yet different. So if you have any questions about this, maybe if you want to know more about the um, attributes or what the attribute values mean, this uh, uh, box is about what attribute values mean when you can consider you yourself in very good in an attribute i can tell you something about this if you have other questions please comment i try to answer if you see a comment a question and know the answer then you can answer would help me because i don't have all the time in the world and uh if you notice something i maybe explained wrong please comment send me a message so i so i can correct it so but that's it for the attribute tests. Next will be about the skill tests.